Morning, guys. What have you got to lose? Everything. What? To die for Christ is to gain. Taking up your cross and following him. What are we setting before him? I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell the personal parts of it, the details of it, but I'm going to tell a little bit on me um, so you'll get where I'm coming from. Um, I was doing what the Lord told me to do. Long, long story, but not real long story, but just I was following his direction, about 90%. But the message I got out about what you're heading, I didn't realize that it was really for me, too. I mean, I knew it was for me, but I, I mean, I'm not, I don't get a free pass on this stuff. These messages are just as much for me as anybody else. But I deviated just enough. And the Lord took me to the scriptures with Moses and the children of Israel and the manna from heaven. And he told them, don't store it up. It's going to rot. And they still weren't satisfied. Some tried to. And they still weren't satisfied. They wanted meat. Look what happened to those people, guys. So that's why I deviated. I was following what he told me to do. But for some were personal too, but I just deviated just enough to get off course. And thought if I just stored up a little bit more, I could do more. But that wasn't his will, guys. So I kind of had to clear the deck, and yes, lose to gain. To be in his will. So right now I'm like, I'm not praying so much for correction. And he's been correcting me and chastising me and all that. Uh, and that's all always good. The pruning part, that sucks, it hurts. You get stuff cut off, but at the same time, he's cleaning the house. But I had to just regroup, and this is my prayer. It's for direction. Because I want to do it right this time, guys. I know that whatever it was, not, whatever percentage it was, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. It was a small percentage, but it was just enough to deviate to, to get me off course. And I didn't realize it. Now I do. So I was like, okay, Lord. Kind of like, to me, it's me standing in need of prayer. Sorry, I'm drinking some coffee, kind of waking up too. I had to just take some time to rest. I'd been doing, just doing too much and just push, push, push. And it's okay to push if you're doing it for the right reasons and for and what the Lord told you to do. So kind of what I'm saying is, what is he telling you to do, guys? What do you have to lose? What are you holding on to? Car, wife, children, who knows? You know, we everybody, as soon as you say that, people connotate it right towards money because we're so wrapped up in money in America. Everything's money, 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 and power. I'm not naive. I know you need it. I gotta put gas in my car to get somewhere. I gotta have a car to get somewhere. And call, everything costs. I get all that. So does God. Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. But what are you holding in your heart that you need to get rid of and clean up and toss to the side? And lay aside every weight sin that this will beset you so you can run this race. You gotta lose it all to gain it all, guys. It's just time to take up your cross and follow him. There's many, many scriptures. I didn't look a lot of them up because I was just gonna just, this is just, you know, for, for you guys and for me. I'm sure you can find some. Plenty of them. <clears throat> the manna from heaven was before Jesus. So right now, I'm living under a lot of grace. 
even though I deviated some, made some mistakes, you know, some of those mistakes actually became sin. Didn't know it. Wasn't trying to. That wasn't my intention. Wasn't even in my heart. That part's true. But this got in the way. My flesh, this, got in the way. I didn't see it like that. Now I do. It's kind of like, ouch. Kind of like when you rip a band-aid off, only this one's a big band-aid. Back to the pruning part, okay? I'm not a big landscaper, guys. I just, you know, I cut the grass and do the basic stuff, but I just it never was, it just wasn't me. I just never took a, a, a real liking to it, like some people do, you know? I mean, I do it, but my head just always kind of looked a little rough. Well, I hired a landscaper a couple years ago. He's our neighbor, and he's really cheap. He told me he cut the grass for 20 bucks. I, I give him 30 because he, he does a lot of stuff, and I give him extra sometimes, too. He's a really good guy, and he does a lot of extra stuff. You know, my head just looked okay, but that was the extent of it. And within one season, he had him looking good. Really good. Full, pruned, fixed. And I watched him one day, I heard him out there, and I just looked out the window, and it didn't even take him two minutes. The wall, cordless, hedge clipper, and he was done. Cut the grass, and he was off to the next yard. But after a period of time of doing it enough, that pruning paid off. I look really good. Didn't cost him anything extra, honestly, because, I mean, like I said, it took him two minutes. Now it's easy. So what's the Lord trying to prune out of your life? Guys, it's not a loss message. This is a gain message. Because he wants us pure and clean. The grace piece of this was Jesus, a man from heaven, was before Jesus. So now we're under a season of grace, but this grace is not free, guys. We say freedom is not free. Grace is not free. Sorry, guys. My phone, I should have turned it off. I will now. Call him back. Apologize about that. Um, grace is, grace is, his grace is sufficient in our time of need. So what do we do? It's time, it's in Hezekiah, it says, church, get rid of the all of the, of the stage. That's one of my messages. <clears throat> that's one thing that's plaguing the American church, the better than mentality. That's huge. Because everybody wants to be up on stage with a microphone and looking down on people and telling them that they know something, that they got a secret recipe and all that other stuff. You know, that'd be a no. So, what do you got to, what do you got to, what are you going to lose? What are you going to let go of to gain? We all have them, guys. Some of them are pets, some of them are, you know, pet peeves, whatever, you know. Maybe even an attitude. Who knows? I'm not judging anybody, okay? This is not a judgment message. This is a, you know, clean up. Find out. Ask for direction. What do I need to lose, Lord, to gain? So I can pick up my cross and follow you. The money part, yeah. Be a cheerful giver, okay? There's plenty of stuff like that, okay? Well, why did you say that? Some of us give, but grudgingly. Or we give... Why do you think some of these mega churches and super superstar supposed church people? Why is sixty thousand people one of the mega churches? Why is sixty thousand people in there? Because they think if they stick a hundred dollar bill in the offering, they're going to get a thousand dollars back, or just as much the problem as, as some of these preachers that everybody's barking against. God's not your personal ATM. Mine either but he is your provider, your help in time of distress, your need, ever-present need, your comforter, be of good cheer. 
Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Man, guys, I can go on and on. Okay? Uh, this is personal, but right now, three, maybe four, major things going on in my body, and any one of them could take me out, literally. Just got healed from one of them, wanting to cut off five of my toes off to save my life. The only two were infected. I said, no, that was three months ago. Long story, but tons of antibiotics, eight weeks, three hour regimen a day, five, one, and nine, plus cleaning it, plus thousands of dollars in medicine, literally. Doctor report was good. Great, awesome. Come back in three months. You're not gonna lose anything. But I had to be my own advocate. I had to tell them no, switch doctors. And I fought the system pretty hard with that because I prayed about it. I said, no, get rid of the infection first. That's what I'm telling you. What's the infection? What are you holding on to? What's infecting your life? Let it go and watch it grow. So then, real quick, fast forward it. A week later, after this great doctor report, well, in one of my shoes, for some reason, I, it was just some shoes that I had. You know, I didn't buy them, but they were given to me. But <clears throat> there were some kind of special shoes, but they had a, about, about like this, honestly, about the same size as the whole width of the shoe and it was like a piece of metal, about this thick. Well, it broke and stuck up two inches into my foot. Because I'm di diabetic, I couldn't feel it, guys. I walked on it for all day. Just check my feet every day after this last I incident, you know, for sure. And my shoes, too, and making sure. Cleaning them and doing, you know, doing all the right things. I didn't want to get another infection, so I came home and checked it. Man, my whole sock was bloody, guys. Blood was everywhere. I went and checked my shoe after. Wow. I was going to toss it, pull it out. And the Lord spoke to me, he said, no, keep it, because it's going to be a testimony. I'm going to clean it out with alcohol, so when I tell people to reach their hand in there, they'll be embarrassed. But, man, it's about two inches thick. It's like a knife, honestly, literally. But it's an old piece of metal. But it was, man, tore my foot up. Same one that just got healed, guys. Now it's okay, because I was able to, I still had an old antibiotic that the prescription I've taken that and I cleaned it real good and it's already starting to get better. But so I've been battling a few things, guys. And the other ones I'm not gonna share with you. I will. You can look up one small one from two years ago. Through it all I learned to trust in Jesus. Couldn't even walk guys. Literally, from one of them. I'm not kidding. Ball flat on my face like my legs didn't even exist, but <sighs> he's living in our brokenness. So he wants us raw. That's one of my other messages. Lose it, guys. I thought this was an attitude. I'm going to end with this, but what do you got? don't have anything to lose you have everything to gain love you guys let's just get rid of this dross that's in our lives whatever it is some of that multiple some have the same ones some of it has become sin some of it's become idols it's time to clean and purge your house your own house me too guys this is not like I said I do not this is not Monopoly. I don't get to pass go and collect 200 bucks and laugh at you guys because I went and bought Boardwalk. Me too. For all. Used to think this was an attitude. It's not. My wife got me this shirt because I had this dream. Look it up. We are the storm. Love you guys. Let's all clean up. I'm not asking for you. You know, I'm not asking what it is. Maybe multiple things. Let's just clean up. 
Time to purge ourselves. Time to walk, not just through the fire, but in the fire. And let him do what he's got to do in our lives to clean us up. Love you guys.